Well, after 19 months of starting operations, Akasa is all set to go international as the airline will be beginning its international operations by starting direct flights to Doha in Qatar to talk more about the international plans and how will FI25 really look like for the airline. We have been joined by Mr. Vinay Dube, who is the founder and CEO of Akasa S. Many thanks for being to CNBC TV 18. First of all, sir, uh, the main question is around international operations as you are all set to commence these ops from 20th March onwards. If we talk about this specific route, it is a highly crowded route as many Indian airlines apart from one airline they're flying on this and there are a lot of Gulf carriers that are already present on this route so how do you plan to really create a very separate uh, market for you yeah so thank you for that uh, Danish we're very very excited uh, we have broken all records here by launching international operations within 19 months of starting no other airline uh, has done this in India before uh, and uh, you know our view is that in this particular market, uh, like in most other areas, Akasa has built a very solid reputation uh, of being one of the most um, you know, customer-centric airlines in the country. I think people appreciate our reliability. We are the most on-time airline in India statistically as published by the DGCA. People look at our baggage performance as being one of the most reliable, the comfort of our seats, the food that we have, the kindness and gentility with which uh, you know, our, our flight attendants and our airport customer service agents uh, behave. And so our view is that as long as we continue to be customer centric the way we have, uh, we'll have absolutely no problem creating a, a niche and name for ourselves on this market or any other market. And that's really what we are focused on. Uh, right. So Akasa has also won bilateral rights for Ku Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. So when can we expect uh, you to begin flights on these routes? Uh, so I, I'd say shortly, and the reason I'm not able to give you a more specific answer is because uh, uh, we have foreign government permissions uh, that are involved, and sometimes these foreign governments take three months, sometimes it takes four months or five months. We've made this application uh, a little while ago, uh, and so I would say it's imminent, uh, and, uh, and you know, my thought is hopefully we'll get all our permissions in place uh, for Riyadh, Jeddah, and Kuwait, like we did for Qatar, uh, in a in a very short period of time, but I'm unable to give you a specific answer. It's it's not nine months. It's not one year. Uh, you know, hopefully a lot shorter than that. Right. Uh, perhaps later this summer. Right. So by the end of FI25, uh, how much business are you expecting from international routes? And is there some kind of a, a target that you've set for the company? Uh, no, uh, Danish. We have not set a target for the company. Uh, although, as we said earlier, we, we are, you know, India's fastest growing airline. We are also India's, you know, first and fastest growing internationally. And so we have, you know, a lot of ambition internationally, but we haven't set a target. We've got an aircraft that has the capability to fly to East Africa. We've got an aircraft that has the capability to fly to Hong Kong, Indonesia, you know, into parts of China, uh, certainly to a number of, you know, uh, CIS countries. Uh, so we've got an extremely capable aircraft. Uh, we have not set ourselves uh, a particular target. And I'll also say that we are, you know, living in a country where, you know, you've got the youth in India that really want to travel abroad. So I think international travel in India is going to grow much faster than domestic travel. And we're just very excited that, uh, that this is the first step, uh, you know, of many international destinations to come, including in this coming financial Right. Since Akasa is going international, uh, what are the plans for quarter agreements? Are you in talks with some foreign airlines for the same? Uh, for the moment, no. Uh, for the moment, I would say that India has, you know, an incredible capability uh, to be able to generate international traffic on its own uh, without needing anything beyond. Uh, and so for the moment, uh, no, we're, we're very happy to do this uh, as Akasa uh, on our own. Right. Now, now, talking about the industry now, uh, we are very well aware that uh, the new flight duty rules uh, that has been mandated by the DGCA, they're all set to kick in from the 1st of June and the industry somehow feels that it is not ready for this as there could be a shortage of pilots. Uh, so what, is a, what are your views uh, on this and how do you align Akasa uh, with the latest uh, mandate from the government? Yeah, so I'd, I'd like to point out two things. Uh, first, that Akasa has no shortage of pilots, right? We've got 700 pilots here, we're extremely pleased uh, with the way in we've been able to attract and retain our pilots. Uh, and, and that's 
you know, really because of the modern generation aircraft that we have, which is the aircraft of the future, and pilots, you know, would like to make a career out of that particular aircraft. It's because of the employee-centric stand that we've taken, uh, you know, the rigor with which we, we train pilots. And so, you know, there's a variety of reasons why we've been able to attract and retain a number of pilots. And like I said, we have almost to the T-700 pilots. So first, there's no real shortage of pilots. Uh, you know, and the second thing is that, uh, you know, uh, at ACASA, we have uh, found a way, um, you know, I'd say to be ahead of every regulatory requirement that we have. And between us and the regulator, I'm sure we'll find a way to work this out. I don't see this, uh, you know, as something that, uh, you know, needs sort of further discussion at, you know, at this level, something between, let's say, ACASA and the, and the regulator uh, that, uh, that we are in, in, in discussions with. Right. Uh, how do you expect to finish FI24 in terms of revenue growth? Um, you know, we, we're not giving um, guidance on, on this, Danish. There's some benefits of being a privately held company mm -hmm. and not having to provide, you know, revenue and uh, and other guidance is, is one of them. I, I will say, uh, you know, two things in terms of finishing FY24. One is, uh, you know, financially and from a cash perspective in an extremely strong position. So that's the one thing, you know, I will say that we've built this, you know, rock solid foundation when it comes to both the business model and when it comes to being capitalized uh, and cash. And that's one way we expect to end FY24. And the second way is, you know, in, in a growth trajectory that no other history in global aviation has ever seen. And the third thing is we expect to end FY. No, I said two, but I've got the third. We expect to end FY24 as India's most on-time and most reliable airline as published through DGCA statistics. So these are three things that I think you can, you know, you can expect us to end uh, the fiscal year 24. Right. Uh, what would be your number one priority in FI25? And how is the aircraft delivery plan really looking like for Akasa at this stage? Yeah. So, so continuing to be, uh, you know, India's fastest growing airline uh, continues to be a priority. We're not, we're not, not worried based on our delivery schedule. We've been able to work things out with Boeing to the point where the delivery is going to meet our expectations and is going to uh, allow us to continue to be India's, you know, fastest growing airline. Uh, so I'd say that, uh, you know, lots of growth, lots of international flying, lots of growth opportunities for our employees is how we expect FY25 to look like, you know, when it comes to size and shape. But really in FY25, we we believe we'll continue to be India's most on-time, most reliable airline, you know, with a with a, a customer experience that will continue to separate us uh, from the pack. You know, we're so proud uh, of the food we offer. We think we've got India's most comfortable seat. You will start seeing USB ports available on, on every Akasa flight. And by the way, all our new aircraft are coming with a Type C port, which is very exciting. It's not it's not the USB uh, B port, but it's the Type C port, which is you know what's going to be in most modern uh, phones. And so that's what you should see on all of the new deliveries that Akasa will come with. Of course, you know Max has the most leg room, uh, and so uh, you know that's what we should expect is this is this customer experience that is second to none uh, at Akasa. Right. A uh, couple of last questions. Uh, what is the domestic expansion plan for FI25? Uh, again, you know, we haven't put out uh, cities uh, per se. Uh, obviously, you've seen uh, Akasa expand into Port Blair, into Ayodhya, into Gwalior, into Srinagar, just for starters. And then, of course, internationally into Doha. And internationally, we have announced uh, Riyadh, Jeddah and Kuwait. But domestically, it's not uh, it's not our habit. In fact, there are, you know restrictions from from signaling, you know what destinations an airline is going to fly. So I'd say just a lot of expansion, uh, some more in terms of frequency, but many more in terms of destinations. But you'll have to wait and see, uh, Danish, as we make those announcements in the near future. Uh, right. Uh, very lastly, uh, globally, if we see there are concerns around Boeing due to so many safety incidents that we have seen in the past three months, and we understand that Akasa's fleet is completely different with the affected aircraft uh, that we are seeing these days. But since you are a customer of Boeing, uh, so what are the concerns uh, that you have around uh, the manufacturing practices of Boeing? Yeah. So first, I, I would say that, uh, you know, like any airline, uh, and we would expect from Akasa, 
or other airlines here in India or all manufacturers, you know, I would say that there is, um, you know, people in this business cannot have too much of a focus on safety. Uh, and so for us, uh, we improve and increase our focus on safety every day. And we'd expect Boeing or Airbus or any other manufacturer to continue to uh, to, to redouble their efforts on, on safety. Right. The second thing is, as you said, uh, Danish, that some of the incidents that we have seen are on aircraft that are not in Akasa's fleet. That's point number one. But more importantly, on aircraft that have been modified. Uh, point number two, in Akasa's aircraft, A, are different but B, our aircraft are very standard. And, and at this point in time, you know, I would say that, uh, that, that both Boeing, the FAA, continuing to you know, improve and you know, raise the bar on safety, which is a good thing for all of us. And, and we're very happy with that. Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dubey. It was a pleasure speaking to you. And uh, all the best for your international expansion plans. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. For more news and updates, all you need to do is follow CNBC TV18 on all of our digital platforms.